The Lifestylist, episode 162, featuring Energy Muse. I'm Luke Story, a former celebrity fashion stylist and founder of School of Style. For the past 20 years, I've been relentlessly dedicated to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of health and spirituality. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. People always ask me about my favorite hotspots when it comes to health and wellness and all things biohacking in Los Angeles. After all, I've been here 30 damn years. I better know something. One of my favorite places to go look good and feel good is Tonic Wellness Boutique. It's up on Beverly near the Beverly Center and the Grove actually. So if you're traveling, you got the two best malls in LA on either side of it. But what they do over there is really intensive therapy. So one of my favorite things to do, of course, is cryotherapy. What I like about their cryotherapy is it's whole body, but they also have local. So their cryotherapy uses sub-zero temperatures to boost oxygen and nutrients, and it only takes three minutes. You also get a super rush treatment, removal of toxins, and a toning of your muscles. The boost in your metabolism actually causes the body to burn between 500 and 800 extra calories in the process. It also refines the general state of your skin to help reduce and prevent signs of aging. So what's cool about the Tonic Wellness Boutique is that it's not only centered on the biohacking and like feeling good, but it's also really about looking good. It's very Hollywood centric. So if you're someone that cares about your skin, if you wanna burn calories, you wanna lose weight, You need to get over there, hop into that cryo, hop in the saunas, get some localized cryo on problem areas and you will be looking and feeling great. So go to tonicboutique.com to set yourself up with an appointment and tell them I sent you, you'll get some extra special treatment over there. tonicboutique.com. This episode of the Lifestylist Podcast, along with many others, is brought to you by my friends over at Organifi. And today, the product I'd like to talk about is Organifi Gold, and it gets a serious gold medal. The purpose of this particular product is to soothe you and to help you recover and relax. So I typically do this one at night in a hot drink, which I'll tell you about, although you can do it on ice during the daytime. It's kind of an all-in-one deal. But the core ingredient of the gold is turmeric, and it's an anti-inflammatory spice. It's one of my favorites. I use it all the time. It's got actually over 8,000 published studies and articles showing its numerous health benefits. So I'll make myself a nice fatty little golden latte to wind the night down. It's also a way that I cheat and trick my friends into thinking I'm a really good chef because I make this amazing drink. But literally all there is is hot water and Organifi gold and some ghee or coconut oil and it tastes amazing because it's got uh, coconut milk and cinnamon and ginger and lemon balm and a couple medicinal mushrooms. So it's a really warm, relaxing beverage and it's clinically proven to reduce stress. So that's what I like to do at night. That's Organifi gold and you can mix it into all kinds of drinks and smoothies and make ice cream out of it everything. It's just totally badass. And more than anything, I mean, it's good for you and all that, of course, but it's just super, super delicious. I love this stuff. I live on it. Okay. So go to Organifi.com slash Luke. That's Organifi with an I, Organifi.com forward slash Luke. And if you use the code lifestylist, you'll save 20% off on your little bucket of gold. That's Organifi.com forward slash Luke, 20% off with lifestylist. We're about to get trippy on this episode of the Lifestylist Podcast, you guys. Wow, we're going to be talking about crystals. We are going to be getting deep, getting nutty, getting freaky. We're going to jump down that rabbit hole and possibly never return. My name's Luke Story, and today we are talking to the ladies from Energy Muse. I've got a website. It's called lukestory.com. And at that website, you can find every past episode of this show, including show notes, If you'd like show notes emailed to you every week, you know that's really easy to do. You go to lukestory.com forward slash newsletter, put in your name and email and voila, every week you're going to get 
all of the topics discussed on each and every episode along with clickable links. You can also find my web store at lukestory.com forward slash store where I link to every single health product that I've ever found useful in my entire 22 years of research, 22 at the date of this recording at least. Who knows when you're going to hear this because after all, it is a mystical universe. But seriously though, uh, lukestory.com forward slash store has just about every supplement and biohacking technology you could ever dream of or hope for. Today's episode is going to blow your damn mind open. It is nuts, all right? But before we get into that, I have to remind you that next week I'll be interviewing Max Lugavere on brain health, genius foods for high performance and happiness. Dude is an expert on all of the things you can eat to make your brain awesome. If you don't want to miss that episode with Max, though, here's what you have to do. You have to subscribe to the show. I say it every week. You got to click that little button that says subscribe. This way, every single episode gets uploaded to your device or computer without you doing anything. It's like magic. I've got a couple upcoming events as well. You can always find my events at lukestory.com forward slash events. Funny how that works, right? I'll be at Mercado Sagrado, October 13th and 14th. And I bet if you enjoy this episode about crystals, you're really going to enjoy this particular event because it is super far out and groovy, solid and right on. It's in Malibu Canyon. I'll be doing my biohacking lounge there. I'm going to create this energy vortex, bring you into it and let you try all of the devices that I talk about each week on the show. Uh, Many of the devices that I've interviewed guests about, that's Mercado Sagrado, October 13th and 14th. Then I'll be taking the old jet plane out to New York City where I will be doing some panels at Whitma Live, my third time with those guys. Really great event. There's going to be a few hundred truth seekers under one roof keeping it super real. That's October 25th in New York City for Whitma Live. And then finally, you can come hang out with me for my birthday party. How's that? Open to the public, or at least as many public as we can fit in the building over at Rama, New York City. It's in the Lower East Side. And I'm going to be doing, ooh, what am I going to be doing? I, I kind of don't want to give it away, but you, you want people to come. So I can't just say it's my birthday. Some people might not be that interested in sharing my 48th birthday. But I can tell you, you'll be interested in having the spiritual download that's going to happen that evening because I'm going to be doing a little yoga, some breath work. We're going to be doing some chanting. We're going to be getting down. This is an event you want to bring a cushion, a yoga mat. Yeah, it's like that. It's going to get spacey up in Rama. October 27th. Again, you can get into all these events at lukestory.com forward slash events. On to today's show with Energy Muse. Energy Muse co-founders Askanosi and Timmy Jandro are not only business partners, but they've known each other since the age of six. So we had some real rapport going in this conversation, as you can imagine. The two founded Energy Muse with the mission to educate and reconnect the world to the ancient wisdom and healing properties of crystals. Their debut book, Energy Muse, Everyday Rituals to Tune Into the Real You, explores how you can help transform life's challenges into opportunities for growth if you're equipped with the right crystals and mindset. Now, I want to warn you, I went down to their headquarters here in LA and uh, they did something really trippy to me, man. (laughs) So I don't even know what this episode is going to sound like. I think they did great. I might've been kind of spaced out though, because yo, and you can find this on my Instagram too. I did a posted a picture of it, but they, Heather and Timmy laid me down on this crystal laden um, PEMF mat for about 20 minutes and guided me through this wonderful experience they call crystal biohacking. I was surrounded by hundreds of crystals on this mat and it recalibrated my nervous system, got me out of traffic mind and just really, really charged me up. Oh, you know where you can see this, I think actually is um, I did a Facebook live of it. And then uh, there's also a YouTube video of this conversation and you might just see it there, but at Luke story is my Instagram and you can find it there. So this is a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a long time. It kind of fits in with a lot of the themes that I've talked about on the show, but to be honest, And I explained this to the girls, so this is not a surprise, but I've always been a bit skeptical of the whole crystal thing. Like, it's just, yeah, I think they look cool. I wouldn't mind having a couple around the house, but I've never been one that's carrying around crystals and energizing them and putting them on my forehead. And it's just, it's weird. I'm, I'm very 
sort of new agey and spiritual, but this is one thing uh, that I have not been convinced on. And so I'm always open-minded, but I wouldn't say necessarily gullible to everything that comes along. But I have had a lot of requests from people who are firm believers in crystals, or at the very least, they're curious about the use of crystals. And so I've obliged both of you types there, and uh, we're going to dig into it. We go deep into this topic. That's pretty much all we talk about. These ladies are very knowledgeable, very smart, very fun, down-to-earth, cool people. We've met on numerous occasions, but we, we've never sat down and really gotten busy like this. So whether you're a veteran crystal wizard or kind of a skeptic yourself, you're going to learn everything you could ever possibly imagine that you wanted to know about crystals. Here's what we talk about. If a biohacking device is good enough for NASA, it's good enough for me. So we discussed the uh, PEMF mat that they put me on. And crystals are energy that you can touch and feel, and they explain how you do that. Taking the woo-woo stigma out of crystals and simplifying the practice of their use discovering crystals that supposedly come from outer space, how long humans have been using crystals. We do a detailed history. There's an extremely common place that people see crystals that we don't realize. We're going to tell you where you see them every single day. You actually use them to communicate. How you can program yourself like a computer chip using crystals. What it's like to come out of the crystal closet. How you can use crystals as a bridge between the metaphysical and physical. How crystals intensify energy, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Then we talk about this fascinating substance called shungite. And you are going to trip when you hear what that thing can do. What it was like to write what is essentially their crystal recipe book, Energy Muse, Everyday Rituals to Tune into the Real You. And the powerful shifting prayer that Energy Muse learned from Bobby Lake Tom. And you can actually get to try it yourself in this episode. So as you can see, this is going to be a fascinating show. Brings me great pleasure to bring you the people behind Energy Muse. Welcome to the Lifestylist Podcast, ladies. Thank Thank you. you. And we're also um, broadcasting this, of course, on social media and recording for YouTube. So if you're listening to this, know that you can watch this experience on YouTube. And speaking of experience, for those of you listening, uh, across from where we sit, the three of us, well, the four of us actually, because Cookie's on my lap. It's her (laughs) maybe her first live podcast. She's done a couple on Skype. But across from me, and you can see this in the Facebook group if you join the Lifestylist Facebook group, uh, because I've posted it there, but there's this mat with all of these giant crystals. And I just laid there for what, 18, 20 minutes or something? Yeah. Yeah. And had this insane experience and it was wonderful, but I don't know that I would advise anyone do that before they're supposed to be really smart and lead (laughs) (laughs) lead a conversation. I'm so zen out. I want to go in the corner and just lay down and kind of take a rest, you know, but here we are. So, so what was it ladies that you just did to me and for me on that crystalline mat over there? Well, would we call it a crystal biohacking of some sort? I mean, I think what's so cool about this uh, mat is that it recalibrates you. So it's calming down your nervous system, which you felt that that was your very first result when you jumped off. And um, it's it's like um, a battery where you plug back in and recharge yourself. And that's we've only had it for a bit, so we've been playing around with it. But Heather, adding crystals into the... Yeah, I mean the thing that's pretty cool about the mat is is just what's with, the mat called? Does it have a name? It's what is the it? IMRS. IMRS. Oh, it's a PMF situation. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. Do, so, what do you think? Do you like? Oh, them? yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do we, they had when they said that the one pad had NASA technology, you know, or like we're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're like, if yeah, it's good enough for space, it's good enough for me. Exactly. Absolutely. And exactly. the astronauts. And um, it was interesting because I was asking a couple people if I could borrow it and just for, you know, 24 hours. And all four people told me no. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, we're good friends. I mean, I'm just going to, you know, can I borrow it? And they're like, no, I can't have it out of my, my energy field. So to me um, and I decided we get one. And now I understand when somebody is like, hey, can I borrow one? And, and so we're going to probably get another one here for Energy Muse just because oh, cool. we want to have it accessible at all times. And is the LED um, eye mask part of that yeah. protocol? Oh, yeah. Okay. And they have a probe and a mat and a whole bunch of different cool. accessories and a heart rate monitor. 
Oh, no way. Yeah. So, you know, cool. we, that's, we could have done a whole Does statistical analysis. Does the heart rate analysis. monitor measure heart rate variability or just your heart rate? Do you happen to know? Wasn't it? It was, um, yeah, because it, it was more about if you're in some Par- parasympathetic or and sympathetic. sympathetic. So it shows you how fast you shift or if yeah. you even shift uh, okay. in that p- time period. Okay, so that's cool. more of what mm-hmm. the heart rate matters. Shockingly, one of the biohacks that I don't have, which is totally weird. I have used one of those mats before, but okay. I'm, I'm, as I was on it, I was like, why don't I have this at home? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. But you have some great gadgets at I home. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. I, I have a lot of a lot of fun stuff to but work with. We have but... the um, the bio mat. We've had that for years. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they definitely feel completely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. The so, PEMF is another level yeah. of, yeah. That's what we thought. So. Yeah. Cool. Oh, good. Well, I'm thank glad you. you know about it. Thank you for that experience. Okay. And then those two, are those amethyst, those giant ones or are those yeah. something else? So that's a, it's a sad story so right there. So Timmy and I bought those at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show um, this year and we fell in love with them because look at the back of it. It looks like that um, Van Gogh that Van Gogh. Oh, and that's wow. natural. That's not painted. So anyway, today after we were setting everything up, somebody called and bought them. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> they're going so they're going to gonna be gone. So Luke, this is it. This is their one and only appearance live. Wow. They're going to be going to Napa Valley. I feel so honored and... We do too. I, as you're going to find out, I know absolutely zero about crystals, which is why this is going to be so fun for me and hopefully the audience. But I've always intuited that. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> cookies, like, you want to be on the show? You know what I love about huh? cookies? Cookies just chill in it. And oh, oh. <laughs> I just put, put Cookie on the podcast. Cookie <laughs> is talking to us. Dog talk. Okay. What are you doing, babe? You're so safe right now. Oh, oh. wait. Whoa, Cooks. Hang, Hang on, on you guys. <laughs> Cookie's got something to add to the conversation. Now she's not going to do it. You, there oh. we go. You take the mic away and she starts... What, what are you doing? Cookie is seeing something. She's seeing entities. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is crazy. So anyway, back to my story. So knowing nothing about crystals, I've always had this really strong intuitive pull that I want two amethysts that size, one on either side of my bed while mm-hmm. I sleep. Mm-hmm. Like the nights, like those would replace the nightstand mm-hmm. and just get blasted yeah. with whatever those do. So we're yeah. going to find out what they do. But yeah, it's a really fantastic whole space you've got going on here. So I better get into the conversation in the okay. interest of time. But before we do, and before I forget, is this space open to the public at all? Can people yes. come here and buy crystals and stuff? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. We're more you're... of, you know, we more are online. Um, yeah. But the other half of the business is more where people want to come in. Showroom. Um, a showroom. Oh, mm-hmm. cool. Kind of okay, but, cool. Just yeah. wanted to clarify that. A lot of people want to touch and feel crystals and so they can. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Because I know you guys have a huge online business yeah. and stuff. And we're in, those of you listening, we're kind of in an industrial park. So mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. Is this just your cool headquarters or can people come here and right. have the experience? All right. So let's jump right into this then. What the hell are crystals? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a good question. That is a good question. You know, I mean, to, to some people, they're a rock um, and they are, you know what I mean? They're a mineral. They come from our earth. And um, I look at them as a tool, really. To, to it's, it's another biohack that you can use. And for me, being a researcher and just always in my head and prove it to me and skeptical, everyone talked about energy. And I've been into this about 27 years now, but... Um, it was energy that I could hold on to and I could get my head around that because I couldn't see it, but I could feel it if I held on to it. So that's what really started the journey for me. But, you know, Timmy's completely... I'm you know, probably more it. like you because Heather and I have been friends almost, I hate to date ourselves, but 43 years. Since yeah. sixth or seventh grade yeah. or yeah. something, First right? grade, yeah. actually. First grade. And so I knew nothing about crystals. I was just like, you know, like, oh my gosh, what is she into now? And Heather would test things on me and she came up with our prosperity necklace, which was made out of jade for wearing it on your body. You will get a result of prosperity. I'm like, you know what? There's something to this. So I was one of nine people and I was in the garment industry for many years but I sold to all the major big boxes and I knew how to get things made. So I'm like, hey, if I know nothing about crystals and we can help other people because I felt helped, let's get these made and get out there and start selling them. And that's what we did. Sold them out of the trunks of our car on the streets of Manhattan Beach almost 18 years ago. Yeah. I've sold some stuff out of the trunk of my car. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us. Come on now. Tell, do, tell. do tell. No, you know what I just thought of is I, I used to smoke Cuban cigars. And, yeah. Uh, okay. Nice. I don't. I can't do it anymore because I just I get so horribly addicted to them. But um, I was thinking of the. I used to meet this guy in an alley in Venice, and he would pop open his trunk after he come come back from Havana. Wow. So you, you can't have Cuban cigars yeah. no. illegally. Oh, yeah. You know they're contraband, and so yeah, he would 
we'd like look around and he'd pop the trunk and then he'd open the boxes and smell yeah. them. It was a really cool experience actually. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I've, I know well, the, that's what was happening. I know with the our back jewelry. of the trunk deals. Yeah. Yours yeah. sounds like a little more legal and legitimate. So well, well you know what happened was is at the time <laughs> You're I was like, well, <laughs> well <laughs> depends but, what country they're yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. Um, at the time I was feng shuiing a lot of celebrities and athletes' um, homes and we would get invited to these Hollywood parties and people would be like, bring, bring your beads, man, bring your beads. It was, like this dr- it was like a drug deal going on. And we'd be ushered in back rooms and we would be selling these energy beads and people were throwing cash at us. And it was, it was awesome. Um, and for about two years, it was like that until we had to learn how to be in business. Yeah. And then, then yeah. that's when the amazing lessons started. Oh, yeah. So... I, I want to get into some of the different applications of crystals and the different types. And before I do that, I just want to preface it by saying, I think this is the first interview I've ever done. I, I, skeptic is too strong of a word, okay. but this is the first kind of modality that I haven't totally been on board with. And just, okay. I'm all in and I'm already doing it. And I just right. want to teach people that don't know about it. This is right. one of those things where I've not ever really resonated that strongly totally. toward crystals. Yeah. And it's really strange because, you know, I meditate, I believe in energy work, all kinds right. of even more out there stuff, I think, than crystals. But yeah. for some reason, this is one of those things where I have a, a one in my hand or one on me. And I'm kind of like, eh, yeah. this is... Does this do anything? It's just, it's the one thing I'm slightly skeptical about. So I'm really excited to well, to learn more, well, you know? You know, for us, crystals are manifestors. And I'll have to tell you, um, I think for a year, we've been manifesting this moment that you'd mm-hmm. be sitting in our space talking to us. Really? Because one of the things why we really were psyched and honored to be part of this is because exactly because of what you just said right now, because there are a lot of people that feel like you. And I think that um, if we could take maybe some of the woo-woo out of it and this, not that it's not to some people, but um, maybe take some of the stigma that it has and maybe ground it and keep it really simple and not maybe make it so standoffish. Um, And we thought that you would be a great person to be that I think that I think voice, so. so thank I you. think so for a number of reasons. One, because while I'm I, skeptical, is not even the right word. It's just inexperienced, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. not just totally um, enamored with the thing and like but that's all in. Smart. That's yeah. smart. But, I mean, but at the same time, yeah. I'm also very open minded, and I yeah. I think I have a pretty good degree of discernment and gut feeling on something, and so I wouldn't be here unless I had a gut feeling that there's something to this that needs to be explored. And I think also maybe why you've been excited and feeling that too is I have a lot of women that listen to my show, but maybe a little bit fewer men, but still quite a lot of men. And I've never known any man that have been like, dude, check out this crystal, bro. Right. Mm-hmm. Like guys do not get crystals. It's a totally yeah, female female well, thing. And so I'm like, I all right, I, we, want, yeah. I want to be like the dude's guide to crystals <laughs> here today. And, <laughs> we like that. Yay. Yeah. All right. Well, we want and, you to be that person. And help guys get on board because... I've always liked them just because they're beautiful and mm-hmm. I and mm-hmm. I'm just visual and I love beauty but mm-hmm. you know I want to get into the energy of it. So so essentially crystals they obviously come from the earth. Mm-hmm. They're uh some people would refer to them as rocks. I mean mm-hmm. they, are they are a certain yeah. type of rock. They just happen to be um you know, clear or translucent or have the, all of these different properties that aren't minerals. In, they all mm-hmm. are right. Of okay. Minerals. So they're, they're not like, you know, you're just rock that you'd find on the beach or something like that. Do any of them come from outer space? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything comes from outer space in mm-hmm. a sense. But are I we mean, outer space? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, are, are, sometimes there's we feel like on the street that <laughs> we are the ones. But um, are any crystals uh, formed from meteorites or anything otherworldly? You know, a lot of people, you know, it's a kind of in our industry, a lot of people say that Moldavite Mm -hmm. comes from Mars and you have other people, you know, we have a lot of scientists and uh, people that are in our industry because a lot of um, physicists and things like that, they're collecting the meteorites. So when we Mm -hmm. go to the Gem and Mineral Show, you've got these little specks from Mars that are selling for $10,000. It's crazy. And people are collecting them like nobody's business. You know, you've got yeah. Silicon Valley over there and it's like the line is long and these guys are just dealing pieces of the moon and things like that. Some people say Moldavites from Mars. I do know that, you know, what we've been noticing is like Peridot is in some of the volcanic. Mm-hmm. And when we were looking at the energy of Mars, they were finding some of the same minerals on Mars that we have here. 
definitely you've got the tech tights. You've got, um, you know, Shunga, my favorite, but that's not from outer space, you know. Or, Sometimes I feel yeah, like it is. It is. It yeah. does feel galactic. I wanted to talk about Shungite in a little obsessed. bit. That's some yeah. weird. That's, that's a, we had a conversation it. on yeah. the phone right about that a couple that. years yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's some weird stuff. So let's talk about the history then, in terms of them having energy that can be used mm-hmm. for crazy sounding things like manifesting a love relationship or making more money or abundance or balancing your home, like in a feng shui application. In recorded history, how long have people been known to use crystals for other than, you know, building a freaking garden or something. Right, right, right. Like not using them as just a rock, but for, you know, their sort of supernatural powers. Well, if you go back, every ancient civilization since the beginning of time had used crystals. I mean, if you look at the Babylonians, if you look at the Chinese, if you look at the Egyptians, they buried with them. If you look at the Romans, they had them on in war. You know, if you look at Native Americans, there's turquoise on the belt for digestion. I mean, Ayurvedic medicine, they used to grind it up and ingest it. I mean, so you look back into every, what I love about crystals is they keep reinventing themselves. I mean, long ago they were used in the breastplates, you know, Mm -hmm. Revelations 21, 20, there's the 12 stones that line the gates of heaven. Whoa. And yet today, look at they've reinvented themselves in the LCD screens, liquid crystal display. What? And what? Yeah. And if you look at some of the next technology that they've said, you know, Apple was working on is, is that this screen would be made of blue sapphires and, you know, um, lasers and the high technology now is made with all of these minerals. So, there's, oh, and you were mentioning earlier uh, computer yeah. uh, microchips. The silicone. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, the main, the how are we? How are we wow. all communicating? Is through this the, this silicon chip that's in computers? It's in, um, it's in your you know Watch. watches. It's with in timers. And so, if that's a source of communication and it's programmable in our in, in computers, well, how come we can't program ourselves as a computer chip? And um, and and is that available? And is this conversation, you know, as you know, because I love listening to you, there is this expanded vision where everybody has this one concept of how everything has to be in human terms. But as we evolve and as physics evolves and as everything's growing, it's it's mind blowing. There's a mine that National Geographic did it. Is it the Nykova mine in, in Mexico? It's in uh, Chihuahua. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they went down, NASA scientists went in, you got to watch this um, National Geographic. And they went in and there's selenite, which we have it on here, the size of redwood trees. And these NASA scientists went down, they're like, wait, what's this? This is five miles deep into our planet. What's going on down here? They didn't even, what? they couldn't even comprehend there it. There were veins that hooked to other veins. The yeah. other veins. Yeah. Like journey to the center of the earth. Type yeah. Exactly. And when you see <laughs> yeah. these pictures Crazy. and these NASA scientists and they look like they're a teeny little ball on these crystals that are thousands and thousands of all of that. And now sadly, um, that it's mind closed. supposedly has been closed. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Can't get into that mind anymore. That's Mexico, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of strange things happen in Mexico. <laughs> so that, that's, oh, that's very interesting. There's a lot to unpack there because as I was saying, coming from a place that's not just totally bought into the whole crystal mm-hmm. thing, it's funny because I have bought into... Uh, concepts and practices like prayer and having fantastic love mm-hmm. for other people and being able to transmute negative energy in a room by just yeah. blasting it with love. And I do all kinds of weird metaphysical yeah. stuff like that all day long, every day. Good. But it's, it's, and that's just normal to me. And I'm usually the guy that's explaining to someone who's more skeptical that it doesn't need to have a scientific, uh, ex- you don't need to have like a, a double blind study to tell you that love works. I mean, my puppy walks in the room and everybody mouths. What mm-hmm. is that? Because it's mm-hmm. a cute puppy? No, because it's a little love bunny, you mm-hmm. know? And so uh, I'm, I'm liking starting to get my head around right. around this. And um, and the fact that everything is energy at the end yes, of the day. Exactly. But yeah. that communication piece is very interesting. That's some that's trippy shit. I never thought about that. Yeah. I think yeah. about water in terms well, yeah. of, you know, the carrier of a frequency or something that's programmable. But yeah. Mm-hmm. So is is what you're describing how we can program a phone or a computer chip with with data 
then are some of the practices that we see in this new agey kind of woo woo mm-hmm. crystal scene is the programming of them then done uh, kind of more in an energetic intentional way but we're we're programming into a crystal a certain imprint of an idea or a concept so, or something how does that work this, so for me and and I've been doing this 27 years like if this is what I think is important for people to know if you think that a, that that a crystal is going to just change your life because you have a crystal, that all of a sudden everything is going to change. You're going to be disappointed because at the end of the day, the only way that you change your life is through you. The crystals are a tool. So for me, I've never really got a crystal and been like, okay, you know, I've never used them like that. But for me, I'm like, um, okay, so maybe I have some money shit I got to work through, okay? And they call this fool's gold because it looks like gold. What I love about the crystal world, pyrite, Mm -hmm. because... It just looks like gold. And so for me, I'm like, you know what? I got to break through some of my barriers. I use it as a touchstone. I use it as something like I got to do more inner work. I'm not expecting this to do it for me, but I like to have it as something that's around that reminds me, oh, you're getting stuck. You're going into old patterns. And it helps me to have something to hold on to while I'm working through things. But I think something yeah. you always say, which I love, is when you're not in that state to remind yourself to be where you want to be, it holds that energy for you. So it's it's it can be there and to remind you again, it's just that touchstone. You right. always say that. I love that. What Where does that term touchstone come from? Do you happen to know? I don't know, but this, I don't know. It really know. is touching it, it really, a stone. Yeah. It is touching yeah. a stone. It's yeah. not I'm gonna, a I'm going to look that up. Yeah. It's, it's one of those old timey sort of terms right. like, yeah. and it's the touchstone of our country that da, 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 you know, yeah. it's that kind right. of, right. Or there's something to touching the stone. I'm going to have to research that. But the earth has this magnetic pull. And I think what's happening right now, because you have to understand, we've been doing this for 17 years. And as of two years ago, Nobody, we're cut, now it's a time that people coming out of the crystal closet. I mean, we, if you knew how many people <laughs> are closet. into crystal, crystals, it would blow your mind, okay? Um, the top people in the world, of course, everyone wants that competitive edge, but nobody's talking about it. Up until two years ago, you could mention it, but we wouldn't be in business for 17 years if people weren't buying crystals and there was it, they weren't getting results. Right. We are in a results orient, and I'm going to be honest. So am I. I do a ton of stuff similar to you. I'll try stuff. I'll do stuff. I'm a formula junkie. I love it all. But if it doesn't work, I really don't have time. I'm married. I've got a kids. I've got a company. You know, there's just not a lot of time in a day. So. I like to keep the things at work, but um, and then discard the other ones. But I just think that the conversation's happening. But people ha- are, are using this as um, I think in many ways when you feel like you're spinning out of control. I don't know about you guys, but even this last week, I felt the energy Absolutely. of the planets. I feel the more tuned in. I like you, and I think what we really were happy that you came today is you almost seem like you're a human tuning fork, and so I, I love that where you know, you it's in calibration, but sometimes when you know when you're off, when you're in tune and you hold something that's solid, you're like, okay, ground in. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to just touch something to remind yourself. Yeah. And it could be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be, I am programming now to the light to so go to the galaxy. I mean, some people do and they should, but, but I don't know if, um, I think there's a practicality as well to it. But I think too, people look at Heather and I as the bridge between the woo-woo and the now-now. Now, crystals just happen to be trendy right now, but we, we've been, like Heather said, we're on our 18th year. We were kind of ahead of our time when we came out with crystals and people were kind of in that woo-woo stage, but we were never really woo-woo. So I think we're at the right place at the right time now. Oh, that's now. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. back... Back in the day, I guess I'm thinking before like three Instagram. Years ago. Yeah, exactly. Back in the day, three years ago. <laughs> Be, before there was this sort or of trend in health and wellness yeah. of the the you know the kind of now age the the, mm-hmm. the crystal green juice yoga girls yeah. and mm-hmm. this whole like uh, alchemy artwork and like yeah. all that whole thing that's going on which I love yeah before that crystals were straight up Sedona like totally straight up the yeah. alien ship is coming we're all getting prepared and then we have our crystals ready you know yeah it was kind of in that realm which I yeah. think is is how I've had to get my head around it but right. then again I'm as you said well you guys have been in business this long why would people still be buying yeah. crystals. If, it wasn't, if they if were they not getting results. If they didn't do results. something, yeah. And I have to say this because our business started because of men. 
Yeah. And I love that you said that because, I mean, my husband's from Springfield, Missouri. Okay. So yeah, he, we, he has him in the house because he's kind of, I mean, that's what I do, but he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> he doesn't have a choice. He <laughs> right. doesn't. You're but absolutely he's right. not like, you know what I'm saying? This isn't his jam, but I mean, this is what we do. But, yeah. but I, the point is, is that I just think that you don't have to like live it by, you could have the stones around you and they do affect you. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they do. It's a, this, it's this grounding energy. Really I mean, we definitely say when you come to work at Energy Muse, disclaimer, yeah. things might stir up because these little guys do tend to intensify an energy, good, bad, or otherwise. They are, what do you always say? They're neutral. Right. So they don't know good, bad. They just intensify things. But to the point of men, I mean, our company started, you know, Richie Sambora was one of the first people, Mark, Mark McGuire, McGuire, when he was playing baseball. Um, who else? There was a couple Tony of Tony Robbins. I mean, there's, you know, and like these men. Is Tony Robbins into crystals? You know what? I don't know if he's into crystals. I, I don't know. I think he's, in, I, could, I couldn't talk to that point. I know yeah. that he's a um, smart businessman and he's open-minded, but he's worn this P, this jewelry for how many years now? 15. He has access oh, to yeah. everything. He in the has world. that little uh, pendant thing. That coin. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. So yeah. that's dope. So he has access I think, to don't everything. They, in the world. At his, I went to one of his events yeah. recently. I think yeah. they sell some. That's us. That's us. Copy it. That's, that's you guys? Well, that's oh. us. That mm-hmm. We, we, we make them. Wow, that's the foundation. so cool. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's a smart that actually, guy. That says a lot because he's, <laughs> he's someone, as you said, that has access to any modality, mm-hmm. any device in the world, knows everyone. And it's part of his form. Formula, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. he gets results, and um, he's consistent, which I think is the truth of anything. If you're consistent, yeah, um, and you stay connected to something, you will get a result. You notice it wasn't like the crystal; it's just you'll get the result because you have a focused intention and you're moving towards it. Well, even something completely non-linear and intangible like prayer, I, I really don't think prayer works unless you're a willing participant in manifesting the result of that prayer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I always say, mm-hmm. trust God, but tie up your camel. You know, it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, yes. a, it's a relationship yeah. Yeah. With, the, yeah. with the unseen the unseen hand. You know, it's, it's, it's a two-way street. And I, and I think all of the technologies are really like that too. I yeah. mean, there's not very many things that you can just passively go, okay, fix me. No. Make my life we know what? Yeah. Believe me, I, just because of our access to a lot of things. If there was a fix me thing, We'd already be doing it. We wouldn't even be talking to you. Right. There's no way out. You got to go through the tunnel. You got to do the work. You got to deal with... This is what Earth is about. It's a life school. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And so there's no really big... There's ways you could go around it faster, but you still got to do it. You have to do it. You got to go through the fire to get to the light. Mm-hmm. With the crystals, something that I've always felt, and I think it goes back to what I was saying, I want these giant six-foot amethysts mm-hmm. next to my bed. I feel like if they're really big, they're going to do something. But if it's one that fits in my pocket, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, this thing's dumb. You know? mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I've been given crystal. Oh, hey, this crystal, it's in a gift bag or something mm-hmm. like that. A little piece of abalone and a mm-hmm. Palo Santo and it looks nice. And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. But I'm never like, okay, I'm going to keep this crystal with me and it's going to protect me or do this or that. But some big ass rocks like you have, when I see that, it's just, maybe it's a guy thing. I'm like, that's impressive. That. Mm-hmm. It seems to me that that's doing something. Have you noticed that there's any relevance as, you know, does size does matter? Size matter. Right. Does size that's matter? That's we were going to go at. there. But I, th- I loved what you said before. It's like with prayer, you have to make that investment, that commitment. Yeah. Same thing with crystals. Like you've got to hang out with the crystal and know like what the energy is. What does it feel like? And how would you do that? Carry it in your pocket. Keep it on your bedside. You have to have it around you so you know what that feeling is like for you. So, I mean, I do think sometimes bigger crystals with more energy can be more powerful. But if you're just starting to delve into all this, you have to start somewhere. But sometimes um, more is not necessarily more. Because I know that there, there was a point in my, in my house that I had so many crystals. Mm. I was coming home and I was a complete whack job. And so was our family. It was too tricked out. Really? And so... I had to actually take a lot of them out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had, because I'm like, you know, I'm a Scorpio. I'm like, you know, I, if I get up 10, power, yeah, if I get up 10, yeah. then what if I had a 50? What if I had a 100? Oh, what if man. I had 300? Story and what was happening is, is that it wasn't making me calmer or better. It was making me more manic. And as an addictive personality type, that's something that I got to watch. And so I had to scale back and I had to let that go because... I realized having five or six was doing a lot more than me for me than several hundred. 
Well, I think your new thing is this year you were trying to kind of challenge people, pick one stone. Yeah. And you should, I'm talking about And the challenge isn't even about the crystals, which is nice. It's your touchstone, but it's take one thing and just do it fully. Like take the juicy parts, the the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it was maybe a challenge I even had for myself. Like stay consistent with one thing Mm because I'm interested in so many things. It's easy to, there's so many cool things out there right now. I mean, come on. It's It's also, yeah, it's it's also difficult to, uh, the struggle I have, it's difficult to quantify what's working and what's not. Yeah, because you're doing some Yeah, I'll things. discover mm-hmm. some new thing and then I post about it and everyone says, is it working? I go, you know, I have to be honest. I really don't know because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. there's the 50 other things that are going on too. Totally. So, yeah. So if I wanted to immerse myself with say one stone, you know, one crystal or a number of crystals, I mean, I'd have to really pay close attention to everything else and minimize some of the other influences so that I could sort of do an isolated experiment of exactly. sorts. You yeah, know? you would. So I had um, I had this man named Oram Miller over the other day. He's this EMF guy. Oh, the EMF guy? guy? Yeah, he's yeah, at my I've house. Yeah, i talked to Oram. Oh, I love him. You, did he scan your house for well, the EMF? Well, he EMFs? came over. I, I offered... The reason I, I bring this up because it kind of goes back to the science thing. Anyway, I, he was looking for a case study house on you know all the EMF. So he, they have their annual meeting where like all the EMF guys come from you know all parts of the world. And so they had it at my house. Oh my God. If that so, ever happens again, please invite me. Okay, first of all, I'm is obsessed. he the coolest person on the planet? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... We had and, a long phone call. He seems like a very knowledgeable guy. He is. And he's just, I just, I like him a lot. I connected with him. He's just really there. But so, you know, I really, some smart people, you know, these biochemists and physics and what, and so I brought out the Shung guide and I'm like, hey guys, you know, and can we do a like mapping on this? And so what happened was this later on after they, they were at my house for like 10 hours. After this, this bio engineer, like his, his name was this long, his, you know, correct. <laughs> right, right. So he takes me aside. He goes, look, these RAs are not going to do anything on your sugar guide because they're foundational. This this is EMF foundational. But he said, this next wave of EMF, they're looking into some of these other modalities like the shung guide and they're expanding out. So I mentioned this because science is starting to, you know, we don't maybe know a lot about the crystals because has science really done a lot of research on it? Although... These crystals have been around longer than we've all been around. Longer millions, than all the scientists. <laughs> exactly. Millions and millions of years, yeah. they've seen earth changes. Mm-hmm. They've hold those, those stories within their walls. And so that's our common denominator. It's, you know, it's, a, it's what we all have in common. Our feet are on the earth. So right. we're always looking up, but maybe we need to look down. But they weren't, you know, it was nice. I was bringing it up, but you know, it wasn't like that's where the conversation was, but it was nice to hear that the conversation down the road could go there, you know? Absolutely. Because there's a lot to know in that whole, that's a whole, that's a, there's a lot going on. Oh, that. the EMF thing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Well, it's interesting that in a lot of the EMF blocking or protection devices mm-hmm. that have come out, they're mm-hmm. always infused with some sort of crystal dust right. or, mm-hmm. you know, there's, yeah. There's always an element from nature right. involved in that uh, to create a harmony. ground it. Yeah, harmonizing effect and right. whatnot. And we had a talk a couple of years ago about Shungite. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you were like, what's the deal? What do you know? And I said, what do you know? Yeah. What 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 was your inquiry about this particular Shungite? Because to me, this is one of the most fascinating uh, well, substances on the planet. Who, Where, the, who did I talk to the other day? He's the one, was it Ormuk, Ornuka? Ormuka? Rafi? Rafi. Okay, so... Yeah. I, was, I talked to him a while back because yeah. I'm on the prowl for Shungai. You know, I mean, I'm always, and he had worked with a lot of people, but you know, the big conversation is, is Shungai a EMF neutralizer? Does this really work? Where's the scientific data on it? And it hasn't really come up for the EMF vessel. You know, it's come up with purification um, in Russia and in, in purifying water because of the carbon molecular structure. But um, I was asking him about it and he's like, yeah, you know, there's something to it, but not, you know, there's, a, there, nobody's looking at it yet. Like, don't, you're, you're going to be wasting, you're spinning your wheels. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. But I'm like, I know there's something down So the, the search uh, kind of ended with Rafi. Well, it doesn't, no, it never ends because, because I'm, I, you know, that's kind of what makes my, I mean, I, I'm looking for some, I know that Dave Asprey at some point had, is curious. There's people that have, are curious, but there's, we were at Dr. Mercola the other day mm-hmm. and I'm like, Hey, you know, what do you think of Shungite? And he's like, it doesn't, I did all my meters on it. It doesn't work. Um, but, you know, once again, 
there's controversy with that because what meters are you putting on it and how do you know it doesn't work? And so there's just, I think there's just more, I think if there's more conversation about it, there might be more interest with science taking a look at some of this stuff. Yeah, I think so too. The molecular structure of that mineral, that's the only place in nature it is found. So the pharmaceutical industry is recreating this, but they can't find this only in one place on the planet this molecular structure that won a Nobel Peace Prize in 1996. The fullerenes. Yeah, the fullerenes. Mm-hmm. So What's that? there's, there, it's like these bucky, they're like bucky balls. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is they help to suck free radicals from the body. So that's why oh, drinking wow. this elite shungite helps to detoxify. So Elite shungite water. Water. Yeah. So, you know, once again, it's obviously, we, we have so many filtrations. And I think at one point his filters, was it Orma? Rafi's. Omica mix yeah, filters, with the, yeah. With the shungite, yeah. I believe yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, does, yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway, so there's more to more to be looked at in it's, that realm. I think there will have to be an incentive with science that's um, either make someone noteworthy or rich. Mm. Well, you know <laughs> what? The discoveries come when someone's like, ah, I want to find my thing and go down in history and oh. have a name of, you know, the inventor of or discoverer of, or there has to be some you know, potential product associated with it. And also, I think that there is something there because if you look at who's buying all the mines right now, it's the governments. Right, right. Interesting. So science, we have to wait a little bit to catch up. Yeah. But you have you have lots of anecdotal Well, we do. And I think that we have a lot of people that have gotten results regardless of it. So I think that that's something to, to consider. Just testimonies. Yeah. We'll be right back after this important announcement. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you've probably figured out that I'm a pretty hardcore researcher when it comes to finding healthy products, right? Well, one of the things I've been searching for for a while is the number one best organic bedding that you can find. There's a lot of cheap, crappy stuff out there. And so I was really excited when I found this company, Altera Pure, and I got them on the phone when I thought about running their ads. And I do this with everyone, by the way, that I run ads for. I got them on the phone and I really grilled them about their whole process the company philosophy, where the cotton comes from, where it's made, how it's made, who's making it, the freaking water that goes in the soil. You guys know I'm hardcore. And Altera Pure passed my test, my scrutinizing test with flying colors. These guys make not only really well-made and safe bedding, but it is actually really soft and comfortable. I don't know, they cracked the code on making soft organic sheets, which are actually quite rare. A lot of the organic stuff is like freaking sandpaper. So these are just beautifully constructed sheets that are really good for you. They're organic, no pesticides, they're non-GMO. They're very environmentally and socially sustainable. And they also are just um, very transparent. You can find out anything you want to know. You can call them. I don't know if you'll talk to the CEO, but you'll talk to someone. They'll answer any question you have and they will prove to you beyond the shadow of a doubt that they are in fact making the healthiest bedding in the world. So if you want to check it out, go over to alterapure.com. That's alterapure.com. Enter the code LIFESTYLIST at checkout and save 15%. Pretty cool, right? I always try to get you guys a discount. It works out well for everyone. I win, the company wins, and you win. So go to, once again, alterapure.com. Enter the code LIFESTYLIST and you will save yourself 15% off your order. And now back to the interview. When it comes to using crystals in order to bring yourself into alignment with various outcomes or balance, uh, Mm -hmm. how does that work? In your book, you lay out like a number of different rituals and things Mm -hmm. like that. A, where do these rituals come from? Who thought of them? Did you come up with them? Mm-hmm. Are they recorded somewhere from some culture? Mm-hmm. And and how do those things work? If you're feeling an internal block, like we were working mm-hmm. on some stuff with me earlier, I'm mm-hmm. going, yeah, you know what? I really want to own a home and I want to have a peaceful house with some trees and there's things I want to manifest mm-hmm. materially, but I, I know that I have to be in alignment with that internally first. So mm-hmm. say if somebody wanted to work through something like that or a relationship barrier, What are some of those rituals and where do they come from? Well, I just to preface, like our book is kind of like a recipe book. Right. So it's, you don't have to read it from the the beginning to the end. You kind of go to the area, let's say prosperity or whatever you're working on and you can work with those recipes. I went right to the sex part. 
All right, well, <laughs> I was like, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sex and money. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm going into this ritual <laughs> great right themes, now. Great themes. But, you know, we always say go with what your gut is telling you. Like if what we say is in the book is something that doesn't quite feel right, tweak it. Go with your in- intuition and, and try something else. But Heather is really good with formulas. That's kind of what she's come into this life with and making recipes and formulas up with crystals because that is what you do. You work with them. Yeah. I mean, when I was, you know, in my early, late twenties, I chucked a lot of things and I went and started studying with indigenous people and healers and everyone thought I was literally insane. My parents are like, this isn't what we raised you to be doing. What are you doing? You took a 360. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a time where I was, you know, getting invited to all the parties and like the hip person. They literally, people thought I was out of it. But during that time period, I was studying with kahunas and medicine people. And I, do you know Listone therapy, that hot basalt rock therapy that they do in spas? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. So I yeah. learned from the lady that originated that. And I remember going to Burke Williams years and years ago and I'm like, hey, I know this hot rock with marbles. It's for, it's for fibromyalgia. It's about getting fear out of the body. And they're like, that's never going to work. Nobody will ever be into it. And now look at it. It's like this huge thing. So sometimes being ahead of your time isn't the Mm -hmm. the best thing. But what I learned through all these things, probably similar to what you've learned with your biohacking and all these things, you start getting in tune with like, what works for me? Like, I'll take a supplement. I'll be like, "Eh," or you know what I mean? I know my body well enough to know what's going to... And I think that that's really the formula where you... We're trying to figure out who we are. What, what's our personal formula? Because what mine is, it's not going to be yours, it's not going to be Timmy's. But I think what we're all doing is to inspire people to educate them enough to find what theirs is. And ours is just about getting grounded, getting centered. Because I was a spaz. I'm probably sure it's still a spaz. You know what I mean? I'm t- AAA personality type. I need something to, I could go to the, to the, outer realms. I I like meditating. I like going to the galaxy. For me, I got to ground. I got to deal with this earth plane and all this like, got to get house and you know what I mean? (laughs) All these like physicality. So this helps ground it on in. And there's a lot of people right now that want to know how to get calm. You know what I mean? Just like stress-free. Just like, and that might only be for 10 minutes, but just like, how, can I, how do I find 10 minutes of just normalcy? I, so in, in your book, there's there's these, I have one right here. There's like these, I think it's really fascinating because as I was reading it, I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. So there's like new moon wishes ritual. Right. And so then there's what you'll need. You'll need this pen. You need this certain quartz, these Lumerian seed crystals, certain numbers of them and things mm-hmm. like that. Have these reci- Have you just developed these recipes in all these years that you've been into this stuff? Yeah, I think that what our book is... 25 years of secrets on page 32. There is, if, if you guys want to change your life today, whether you believe in any of this stuff or not, I, 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 I promise you because it's been, it works through time. There's a prayer that Bobby Lake um, Tom gave us and it's an ancient medicine prayer. And if you walk through your house and you sage your house and you say this prayer exactly how it is said, something will shift. And, can, you, um, can you do it for us right now? Oh, we'll say it. Okay. And you know, there's parts of it where I, I called him and I'm like, you know what? I don't know. This is kind of spooky. He's like, just do the prayer as it was written because this has been in the tradition for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. And he's never it. allowed it to be yeah, published. So this, and Who's I, he? Who's this guy? This is um, Bobby Lake Tom. He's this medicine man. He's one, If you look him up, he's one of the, one of the few living Native American, like the real deal... Oh, cool. Bad, yeah. So I, I had done, because I, I love, I like, I'm, I'm one of those people, come on, I'm, I'm looking for information. I'm looking for the secrets. I'm yeah. looking for the formulas because you know yeah. what? I'm surprised you don't have a podcast. What? <laughs> Why? I, I, I listen to yours. That's what you're doing. I, I don't need, you're already doing it. You, you would, a, yours would be my, that's what I don't want to be doing and you're already doing I it. I guess you can, you can have other people do it. You can have other people do it for you. Yeah, yeah. you're already doing I'm it. I'm the same way though. I'm obsessed with finding, you know, the root of the truth and then the truth behind the truth and Yeah, like and so how do I get on, to you know? A to Z quick 
quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do I do it? I mean, I got to do it, but I want to get there fast. And what this book was, and Hay House came to us. We got a call one day that, that they, this publisher called us up and said, will you write this book? And we didn't think that it was true. And so we never called back. And they called back again. They're like, hey, look, we want you guys to write this book. So it, everything kind of... Well, and Hay House had not been into the crystal genre. So they're like, you are the leaders in this industry. We want you to write this book so people can understand about crystals, just like you can. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Good so for this you is guys. That's, that's, a, and this that's a very high compliment. It well, was. It was, a, you, it was an Luke. honor. It's it was awesome. an honor. It was an honor. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Um, and I, I'm sure you, you need to... Why do you not have a book out? I mean, you need Seriously. to have a book out. Well, did we see that over there in your... Um, Because I mean, come on. Book, you know, that's funny. You mention it. I just was talking to a friend of mine who just got a book deal and he's like, oh, I talked to my agent about you. You should totally have a book. Oh my God, for sure. Oh, really? Shit. I I have a few of them in my head. So one of these days. Get them down. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, you have to get a book out because I think it would be fabulous. Um, And I could totally see you doing that. In your new house. That's yeah, all up. of your trees are on you. your lap. Cookie is hit there. Yeah. And just, I yeah. mean, it's like, I don't know. I feel like there was just when you're on, there's so many good things. It's like, you just have to decide what it is that you want to do. Yeah, like I so like many that. good things are coming at you. So that's great. I like great. that vision. There I am at my, at my, uh, Lovely dining room table, yes. signing, signing with yes. a sharpie, uh, stacks of <laughs> stacks of my new book to send off to whomever. Pod, I know, but how long do you think? Would you, would you foresee that happening? Uh, I think that I'll start hammering out a book thing next year. Okay. The yeah. beginning of the year. Yeah. I have another business that a lot of people don't know. It's called School of Style and it's like, it's my main thing. It's my right. day job. And so I'm working really hard on that business this year okay. because that one is profitable and great. And I've had it is for 10 years. Heart? No, it's just, I started it 10 years ago and it's, it's a solid business and it pays the bills and it's, helps a lot of people, but it's right. not in an industry that I'm really passionate about anymore. Right. It's in the fashion industry, education. So so I've been putting a lot of energy into that this year. And I'm sort of like that um, racehorse that's being held behind the gate because yeah. I have so many ideas yeah. like the book and things like that myself. But I have to kind of keep some of my priorities straight. And, right. and uh, that's a really, it's a valuable project and you know right. one that has potential So you've been for, having to write collateral collateral for that school, right? Yeah. I mean, I have a partner, Lauren Messiah, and we this year switched to an online model. We used to do live classes all over the country. And uh, we did that for nine years. We're in our 10th year and we just decided to move online so that she and I can both pursue our own individual dreams, Mm, such as the one we're living right now. That's great. So do you write the course material or do you... Yeah. Okay, because I feel like I see you writing and it's she just and like, I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we have video courses, so there's more video than written. But right. yeah, we come up with the curriculum and stuff like that. And wow. we teach people how to have that career. So cool. there's ideas like books and things. And I'm like, okay, it's just, I have to be patient and make sure that I take care of my responsibilities there and, okay. and that nurture that baby that is now a teenage business, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. It's right. like if you guys, well, you guys, it sounds like this is still your passion, but imagine if you had... Energy Muse, and then you had some other thing take off. Oh, you did a YouTube channel, and like, holy shit, everyone loves my YouTube channel. Right. I'm, you know, women's yeah. empowerment, or like whatever you're doing. Right, right. And you're like, oh yeah, but I still have a business. I can't right. just like walk away from my business. Right, right. E- even if it's not necessarily the thing that you know you're most. You're waking up every morning going, oh my god, this is amazing. Right, right. That's how I am with this stuff. You know. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could, but you know what? I think everyone can feel that. A lot of people could feel cool. that just through just your words and stuff like that. Well, thanks. Voice, anyway, enough about okay, me. Anyway, I wanna, anyway, I want to hear your prayer. Okay, so you guys, th- seriously, I, I promise. I, I'm even saying I promise because <laughs> this I know works because so many people have done this and so many um, skeptical people have done it and they said, wow, that did really work. Mm-hmm. So, And it's, it's a minimal investment of a smudge stick that you could get at any natural food store or even go pick it and dry it or exactly. whatever you want to do. So it says, great creator. You start at your front door. This is a Native American thing, so nobody's um, doing any... Religious. Or whatever words everyone puts to stuff nowadays. But anyway, great creator, the four powers of the universe and all my relations and good spirits in nature. I come before you in a humble manner and ask for your help. The way I understand it, you put this medicine on the earth from the beginning of creation to help human beings. This medicine is used to purify our mind, body, soul, aura, and environment where I now stand. I therefore ask that you accept this medicine and purify me. I ask that you remove all bad spirits, all bad forces, all ghosts and deceased people or any evil entities and negative energies. 
I ask that you remove all fear, pain, and sickness and do not let them return. Hmm. So that's what's up. So I love that. I know a lot of people have said, you know, I don't know about the like ghost part and I don't know. And, and that's what I called him about. He's like, just say it. How it how it's been done? Okay, <laughs> it works. Because like over in you know Asia and stuff, they're they're giving you know offerings to all this stuff. It's just here in the West for a little bit. So just just do it and say it. So I definitely, um, if anybody is having a problem with, oh my God, I'm stuck. You ha- say you had a fight with a loved one in the house. How do you get the energy out? Say this. Mm-hmm. Break it up. Get the sage. Get some bells. So anyway, that's, that's beautiful. That's I it. found that prayer to be very non-threatening in oh, any good. way. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, who, who, after all, who wants ghosts and, and bad energy around anyway, no even if you don't believe in that, totally. to me, it's like, eh, just Why to not? be on the safe side. Just be on exactly. the safe side. Exactly. Taking precautions. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay, so we talked about the size of the different crystals. That doesn't so much matter. It's it's your personal relationship with them. And mm-hmm. I guess yeah. on a molecular uh, mm-hmm. basis, having one molecule of a crystal is essentially the same thing as having a six foot tall one, really, because mm-hmm. it's just um, it's a uh, you know holographic in a sense, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So we covered that. Then, wow, Luke, that was pretty cool. Yeah, That's how you just sum that up so fast. You're good. Okay, he's getting right. it. Okay. He's got I'm, it. I'm, I'm, well, I'm sitting in a room full of crystals. Well, you're feeling it. I mean, like, yeah. wow, can we write that down? That I know, was great. That was good. If okay, I'm that was not, really good. If I'm not absorbing what's happening here, uh, something's wrong you with are. me. You are. Wow. <laughs> the next question is what about the different shapes? So, in nature, like we see these giant amethysts, and it just mm-hmm. looks like a big round stone, but they've taken a big saw and they've hacked it mm-hmm. in half. But then with a lot of other crystals, there'll be a pyramid, there'll be an mm-hmm. obelisk, they'll be mm-hmm. round. What do the different shapes indicate? Well, well, like a sphere is is unending energy. So it's like continual energy. So you'll find like rose quartz and lots of different stones come in sphere shapes. But what's so crazy is it, it um, like a point you might use to manifest. Like if you were writing down some intentions and you put it on a piece of paper and you put your point on top of it, you are manifesting that intention with um, the crystal point. Like you're asking for it to to happen, so to speak. Um, cubes are really good for gridding out rooms. Um, what other shapes, Heather? I just I like pyramids. The, yeah, pyramids. The, the point the points are good because it's you're putting the energy pointed upward. It's like yes. a laser beam. Okay. Yeah. I like the cubes if you're trying to manifest money because it brings a solid kind of frequency. Your eye sees it. They see it sees a cube. It has this structure to it. It has a foundation to it. So the shapes are all very similar to you know. Um, also pyramids. It's that pointed energy going up. Um, it hearts. Ha- hearts. I mean. Shapes definitely have, and there's all. It's different layers in today's world. Every you want to add all the different layers. You just can't be doing one thing to get. I mean, you, you have to. You have to look at pyramids <laughs> with some reverence. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. if you just look ar- around the planet, how at whatever point that was, yeah. these pyramids popped up at the same exact time on totally different continents. Yeah. Where the human beings that built them had no contact with the other human beings that built the other ones. There's something really yeah. weird about and pyramids. Isn't it like the Egyptians and yeah, the, you know, and the Palladians? Yeah, and they all, all like popped up on the planet at the same time. It's and it's, they all line up, right? Or yeah, something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're all yeah. on the ley lines uh-huh. of the planet. It's Have you just, ever slept under a, py- a pyramid? No. Have you ever been under a pyramid? No. Well, Heather yeah. used to. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. When, when my husband first met me, and I, I felt like it was, it was full disclosure. Um, I used to sleep under a pyramid, a copper pyramid, because I was doing research on is this regenerative? Am I going to meditate deeper? Um, and so I used to sleep under that because I would put a banana under a pyramid and then have another banana that wasn't under the pyramid. And the one that was under the pyramid didn't um, age. It didn't age. What? And so yes. I would do, like, my house is like a walking wow. scientific research lab. Right. He was There's, wondering why she wasn't sleeping in a bed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm out in the living room and under a pyramid. Yeah. So now <laughs> when we have crystals and I'm like, you had full disclosure, buddy. Okay, right. When you met me, I was under a pyramid. Right. It's charging. It recharges. Yeah. What I want to know yeah, is... It recharges, yes. Yeah. The obvious question, did you consummate the relationship of under a pyramid at oh, any point? Oh, that's a wow. great God, question. that's going back huh. in some time. I'm sure I did. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what guy is going to argue with that? You could exactly. have, like, the most skeptic guy, and you're like, listen, we need to do it under the pyramid ah, because yeah. he'd be like, oh, yeah, babe, I'm totally... I love pyramids. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take it to another frequency yeah, yeah. Exactly. of ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, Char- I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Well, I'm... I, for whatever reason, I think just because 
you can't ignore something that's been that prominent on the planet that I like pyramids. Yeah. And I have a friend that owns a supplement company uh, called Symbiotica. They make this really great uh, algae yeah. oil. Whoa. Yeah, it's a, it's a vegan algae oil and they put astaxanthin in it. And oh it's, my God. it's 50% DHA by volume. Whoa. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Whoa. It's amazing Where's stuff. Where's this guy making this out of? Um, they have a lab. I think this stuff's made in, I don't know, Hawaii, Spain, okay. Germany. Because oh, so okay. that's where all the, the best farms are for that. Right. Okay. Uh, but his name is Matthew Blackburn. And I mean, if I'm a biohacker, he's like, you know, next level biohacker. Mm. He, I learn a lot from this guy. But do one you take thing, it in drops or yeah, how do you Yeah, just, dropper okay. under your tongue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's got a little essential oil uh, of um, uh, lemon. Wow. And then some stevia extract. Mm, yeah. Because nice. it doesn't it doesn't taste fishy, you uh-huh. know, which is mm-hmm. all of the algae, you know, spirulina, yeah. chlorella, mm-hmm. yeah. fish oils, mm-hmm. krill oil, they're like all yeah. super fishy and gross. Wow. So he found a great formula. But anyway, Matt, uh, at Symbiotica, they keep all of their inventory under a giant copper pyramid. Well. And he swears by mm-hmm. it. Oh, yeah. I mean, all of his I walk in his house, he lived in it, he just moved, but he was in a cabin at Big Bear. And I walk in there, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is all that? Yeah. All of his supplements, all of his food are all stored just on his carpet in oh, the yeah. living room under this pyramid. Because it preserves. Yeah. yeah. He's, it preserves. Like, he's like, you don't get it. You're yeah. not. I was like, what? Is that I want to look at his product. I know. Yeah. Okay. Symbiotica. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, okay. it's amazing stuff. I like so, that. okay. So the shapes make sense to me. Also with sacred geometry. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys have done kundalini yoga at some yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Big time. So that's one of those things like crystals that I mean, I buy into Kundalini Yoga, no problem. I go in yeah, and I go, mm-hmm. oh, you're, you're, um, you know, getting rid of your past lives and right. this and that. I go, yeah, okay. Sometimes I, I remember doing like it. This. I'm like, did this guy make this stuff up? Like sometimes <laughs> Yogi, when I've been oh, doing it. Oh, totally. But I, mean, I, I love the whole thing, but I, I've been doing I'm like, wait, did that, I wonder if this guy's just messing with it. But it's, the technology works, but there have been it times that I'm like. technology, yeah. Do you think yeah. he just was in a room just like, you know, I, I, asked, of I asked Guru Singh <laughs> that and I asked Tage that. Okay. Tage is, is my teacher at Nine Treasures. And I asked both of them on my podcast. Yeah. I was like, all right, heads up for yeah. the record. Was he just sitting around like yeah. fucking smoking neem leaves yeah, or something? Exactly. Or just like, oh, let me think. This yeah. one uh, decalcifies the pineal right. gland and opens up the third eye yeah. and, da, yeah. da, 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 and cures diabetes. Like, because you eat a peach and then stand on your head and yeah. count to 85. But it works. All yeah. this stuff works. It's I crazy. Know. Yeah. It works. Well, so. going back to the shapes. There's all of the sacred geometry within yeah. Kundalini where you're, yeah. you're moving your arms in these yes. patterns, 90 degrees, 60 yep. degrees, yep. and it's very specific. specific. Yeah. yeah. I and, love the technology. And, and of Kundalini. whatever it does, I don't know, but I feel really good. Uh-huh. So mm-hmm. I'm going to err on the side as far as the, the crystals go that, you know, these elements, these energies from the planet have their own inherent power. And then man using intention and technology to mold them into different shapes has got to be able to amplify. Well, those powers. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at Yogi Bhajan and some of these, you know, these yogis, they always have crystals on certain fingers to enhance oh. the energy because they're all, each finger relates to a planet. So when you have, I don't, my, I took mine off when I was doing work on you, but each each finger, you know, here's, if you want to have money, you put, you know, uh, sapphires on your index finger. So if you look at Yogi Bhajan, he always had specific Interesting, crystals. and he also mm-hmm. had his own crystal collection. But mm-hmm. you know, so that's that's more Ayurvedic. But um, but there's yeah. a science to that as well with the gemstones and the planets and how they link to our hands and to our body. Rad. Yeah. Actually, now that you mention it, Tage has crystals. All she's my Kundalini teacher, Tage Kalsa. And she rocks. She has yeah. crystal. Are oh, you been to her class? We went on. Um, what was it? Like a month ago. Yeah. Oh, cool. At, yeah. What was some like at Rama? At Rama. Oh yeah, she teaches at Rama. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and we funny. did the calcification of the pineal. Yes. And I have <laughs> to say, I am feeling great. Yeah. Her, <laughs> is that something I'm like, do you think it was from her class? I know. It's the the de- yeah, it's the decalcification. Well, her whole house is full of crystals. Okay, well, but why? Did you have you ever yeah. asked her like? Because she's a smart lady. Yeah, yeah, she is, and she's been doing the yoga thing for 30 years. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. she a scribe? Didn't? Yeah. Isn't she the one? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, right. she was, yeah, for a long, long time. But yeah, I'm going to ask her about that. All right. But, the, you know, some of these things are just, I just for, take it for granted yeah. that it's... Well, they're going to be the, finding you now. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> they're going to show up all over the place. They, I'm still they, the they one, like, like you now and they're going to find you and you're going to be, they're going to be around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still attached to the size though. I'm still like, no, I need big ones in my house. How much are those, uh, how much did you sell those two giant amethysts for? Um, 20,000. 20,000 for the pair? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. That was a good deal. I'll work yeah. on that. I'll work on that. Manifest it. Okay. Speaking of shapes and odd practices, yeah. I've got to ask this. What is up with women inserting jade eggs into their vaginas oh, and uh, cruising yonies, around yeah. and living their life? Please how, explain. I haven't quite tried that one. I don't know, Heather, have you? Well, I think that if you look back, there's a very, you know, it, I think it's Chinese. Yeah. It goes back. Uh, but okay. um, also, you know, I think women are very much into self-pleasure now and they want to be able, it's another way of strengthening. Um, I know people, women have meditated with them. I, um, for some people, it's a sexual experience. For some people, it's about getting to know that part of your body and experiencing that. And I love that just the conversations coming up. And I love that you just even asked that, like, how cool is it that we are now at that time? But you know what I mean? It's just which is great because then in your next relationship, wouldn't you want to have a woman who like has yoni eggs and I she knows her stuff and she's so. like, come on, <laughs> who knows? There'll be a very but, strengthened area down there. There's, yeah. uh, there's this woman, Kim uh, uh, Anami, Ama, Amani, forget the last yeah. name. She's been on a friend of mine's podcast a number of times, but she's quite famous on Instagram and she's a sex therapist, oh, kind of great. sex expert, but she does uh, like vaginal weightlifting. Oh, And so well, she that's holds- cool. That is she, pretty cool. Yeah, actually. so she'll put some sort of sphere with some sort of rope yeah. connected to an object that's really heavy and she'll cruise around and like hold it inside there and just wow. grip it with her. What are they called? Kegel muscles? Ke- yeah, the Kegels. Kegel muscles. Uh-huh. Yeah, and she just, she, it's like, she calls it pussy kung fu or something wow. like that. Wow, well, <laughs> this is a whole new Luke, world. you do live a good life, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, who gets to do that every day? And talk about <laughs> right. it. Come on. <laughs> I'm like, so that's, but I've always looked at that. I was like, I don't know if my girlfriend was doing that, I'd be, it's a little, even for me, a little out there. But the jade right. eggs, you're not like, I don't know. Yeah. You're, you're not like a, the strong man of vaginal lifting. Right. It's yeah. not like right. vaginal CrossFit or something. So yeah. <laughs> vaginal somehow I, CrossFit. I'm loving this. Somehow I find the, the <laughs> what are they called? Yoni eggs? Is yeah. That what yeah. Call them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the jade yoni eggs. I find that to be a little more feminine and, and right. um, sensual than like weird. But and, to uh, the point of, does, you know, and some people, I definitely think the mineral that it's the yoni eggs is in is important because you want to clean it and you want to boil it and you want to make sure the bacteria or anything gets off of it. So I know people are making these with maybe um, obsidian, which is more oh. of a glass. And I my concern is with that, and I know that they have phallical ones and mm-hmm. all this, but when you're cleaning it, 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 I'm concerned about the shattering and the breakage. So usually oh the, if you go back into more of the ancient practices, they were made with like a high quality nephrite jade, which can endure that kind of heat to keep the bacteria off. Just oh. side night, side cool. night conversation. Yeah. You have Thank with. you for going there. That you know was what? good information. That is what I like to do. Thank you know you. what? You know that what? Was very good. Yeah. So yeah. takeaway there is ladies, don't make a homemade dumbass jade. Yeah. You like know, no, no. Like rose quartz. Ro- yeah. Do you know for the cleanliness factor? Yes. Yeah. You know, but everyone, do yeah. it, you know, everyone has well, different I thought opinions. It, I thought it was interesting. And I guess going back to ancient China mm-hmm. where this originated from, I thought it yeah. was interesting that it's jade. There's a reason why. They didn't just... Pick yeah. that for the hell of it. Exactly, because it could boil under the heat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So there's, yeah. Okay, cool. There's cool, a recipe cool. to everything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then the other thing that I've been fascinated by uh, is another jade application, and that is uh, in my Korean spa, we spa, they have a jade sauna room. Mm. And then they have yeah. the Himalayan salt room. Yes. What's up with with mm. jade in large doses like that? Well, it has, you know, it has a hot healing effect, definitely, just as the Shungite rooms in Russia, where people go into to recalibrate their blood pressure. There's a healing, if, as mentioned before, every ancient civilization since the beginning of time have used these modalities. And when you go in each room, whether it's salt, whether it's jade, then you go into the cold and the hot. I love all that, you know, with your body the going up and yeah. yeah, and the marble. I mean, they all are definitely putting your body in different frequencies. And so we want our body to go in and out of that. But definitely jade has a, a very healing effect on it, which is why you see what are those hooks, the Moris in New Zealand, they always have them made out of jade. Oh, and there's, yeah. there's a lot of That's symbolicness. Cool. There's a lot of, you look at the Chinese, they have a lot, ton of jade jewelry. Thank you, Cookie. For, I know, Cookie, for, you cookie, have been man, such a great... Cookie is cool. Interviewer. Wow, I mean, God, know. I want to get Cookie with like a little necklace on I with a know. little like crystal hanging from it. She's anyway, pretty much But the Cookie coolest. doesn't even need it. Cookie... Cookie's chill. Cookie is chill and I hope Cookie likes it here. <laughs> um, but... 
So, Cookie's yeah. like, a, she's a vegetable. She just, anywhere I put her, she'll yeah. just lay down and just go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. she's She suits my personality. It's funny. You know, they say you begin to look like your dog. Yeah. I don't know if we look alike, but we definitely act alike. Wow, I'm, that's I can a good be, day I'm, for you, look. I'm, I'm very, <laughs> very sedentary unless I force myself to get up and be really active. Wow. I love just laying around, laying down, sitting that's, down, not doing is, shit. is, wow, that's so, some relaxation and yeah. I like it. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're peas in a pod as far as that goes. So uh, let's see. So what about, I want to cover a couple of, the specific one. So we talked a little bit about jade, about the salt rooms, the healing benefits mm-hmm. of that, and then the shungite. What about, and this isn't mm-hmm. really a crystal, I don't think, but it's another you know, mineral mm-hmm. dealio from the ground, a lodestone. Mm-hmm. Do you guys know anything about that one? Okay. Haven't worked tons with lodestone, but I know that a lot of people do work with lodestone more as like that magnetic pull, you know, because of they, they see two coming together. So... I personally can't talk to that too much because I've I've played around with them, but I haven't really, I wouldn't be able to say that I've used them enough to know enough about them. Um, I think they're interesting, but they didn't hold my, but I do know a lot of people use them. So definitely for sure. I find that they're, what I find interesting about the lodestone is they're magnetic. Mm-hmm. It's so mm-hmm. weird. Yeah, it, just, really cool. it looks like this piece of, you know, um, asymmetrical coal yeah. basically, right? Yeah. And then, I put uh, some of it in my glass water bottle, my live oh. spring water mm. bottle, and I, I dropped it in there, kind of like you would yeah. shungite. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. I need a piece of shungite. I'll add that in there. But I put it in there and I dropped it in and it went like, whoop, and scooted over to the side. I was wow. like, wait, this is some supernatural shit. But then I realized there's screws in the in the stand oh my God. underneath the glass and it was like, whoop, and it just magnetized to the edge. Did you only put one edge. in? Yeah. Okay, interesting. That's yeah. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's, this is a trippy element, whatever this yeah, is. Well, yeah. I wonder what the molecular structure of that one it's is. It's just so weird what that it's it? magnetic to yeah. me. And yeah. then someone gave me a giant one, maybe the size of um, a softball squished. And I put that, I like glued it to my headboard behind mm-hmm. my head. Just for shits and, yeah. just okay. for wow. shits and giggles. Okay. Uh, because it said like Shungite that it can protect you from EMF and things like that. Wow. So I thought, okay. oh, it's definitely not going to hurt me. And I didn't have anywhere else to put it. Interesting. Well, so, did you feel a difference? You know, it's when I do so many things. Yeah, That's the right. problem. Okay. All right. It's hard to A-B test stuff right? because it's just like so many things are going True. on, you right. know? Uh, but I'm not mad at it. It definitely didn't make things worse. What about black obsidian? What would that be used for? Well, black obsidian is definitely what is the volcanic glass. And so um, there were arrowheads that used to be made of black obsidian. Well, it's funny. When I was a kid, we used to f- go arrowhead hunting yeah. Yeah. in Colorado yeah. out in the plains. And uh, we would find those. And yeah. I, did, I just made the connection. Yes. That's what, yeah. that's what so they were. So you see how this has been around for a while. All these things. You'll, you start, it start making more sense. There's, there's something here going on that we just um, can... It's another tool. It's another tool to add to the tool chest. And then what about... Uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, hematite. Hematite, love hematite. Very hematite, grounding. a lot golfers love hematite because it helps to bring your energy back down to the, the focus. Ground. What was the? Um, we had a couple golfers at one. Well, actually, yeah. This is a funny story. My husband and his friend were wearing a, a necklace made out of hematite, and then another one was wearing one called Performance. No kidding, there was a pro behind them. They both got holes in one like consecutively wearing those pieces. So yeah. wow. it just keeps them very focused. Like you said, grounded. You're very like in tune with the game. Yeah. So if you ever just, that's even a good research. If you ever are feeling like you're scattered, holding on to a piece of hematite will help you feel centered and grounded. The whole thing with crystals is it helps you to feel. Yeah. That's the whole thing. That's, that's right. the, for me, that's the bottom line. That's the takeaway. If I were to say, what are crystals here to do? They're help us to trust ourselves and they help us to feel. That's it. Well, it's interesting too, because if you're working with them physically, like when I was mm-hmm. on that mat and I had those two or those quartz sort um, of... Selenite. Selenite, those mm-hmm. two bars that I was yeah. holding. Mm-hmm. So um, like imagine a really skinny beer can. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe like a red, like a red Bull can. Total, kind yeah, of? more of a Red, red Bull. Bull. Yeah. Yeah. And so one in each hand and I was noticing, I mean, I was going into these sort of really spacey places, mm-hmm. which was amazing. But the one thing that kind of kept me there is 
is I didn't want to drop those. Mm. And so I noticed uh, that I was anchoring my presence using my body, actually physically connecting to the, to the stones. Oh, you know, okay. Cool. Just, we'll see. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. I, I think there, and I, you guys gave me a set like that at home yeah. and I use them sometimes when I meditate, yeah. when I remember to grab them uh-huh. off the table, but they kind of anchor. I yeah, think that's they're, a really they're in good my way. living room. So I think with, with some of this, and I, I guess that's what I was trying to get at with the rituals is, is that there's a certain degree of presence mm-hmm. yeah. and intention Absolutely. that's Absolutely. inherent to setting, like just setting up this thing in front of us that you have. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of care that goes into that and presence yeah. Yeah. that goes into yeah. it. It's that's, ritual. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, we all have daily rituals. And then it seems like there's a number of different types of courts. There's like this courts, that court, this mm-hmm. one, that one. Are mm-hmm. there quite a few of those or am I imagining that? No, there are. And each one has different molecular, I mean, each has different mineral contents. So you've got, you know, smoky quartz, you've got citrine, you've got, you know, different amethyst. There's so many different layers of all this. That's why it's kind of cool to go to um, Tucson because every part of the world is represented there. So you get to see the whole world in the minerals. And Brazil has certain minerals. And then you've got Morocco and they've got their minerals. And India. you get to, in India, and you get to learn and see what's going on on our planet and the stones that are coming out of each region. And so, what did you know? someone say today? They're like, it's almost like each crystal has their own personality. So they are minerals, but if you think of them as people or as entities, they really do have their own personality or energies, just like we do. I'm sensing, I, this is a very like the industry part of it to me is very Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like I can mm-hmm. imagine these archaeological digs in oh, yeah. Brazil and these different countries. And then they, you know, they make the big score and they uh-huh. get, yeah. it's they a, get it's mineral, a corrupt industry. mineral I mean, rights you know? to that land. And then totally. they bring them to Tucson and sell them. It must be a really interesting industry to be in. It's a really interesting industry to be in. Um, and I think that it's changed. We've been going to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show for the last... So is that the mothership? Is that oh, like the ultimate? That is the mothership. And it's miles and miles and miles and miles long. You could really? not get through it in two weeks. What? If you went through every part. And we... Well, all the venues. We now go for, what, wow. nine days and we take four people and we can't what even get the through it. F? It's yeah. that big. Oh my it's God, I got to go to this. Oh, you my, have you got will, to go. Because, that sounds no, it's epic. No, Beyond. Yeah. It's beyond. Wow. And, but yeah. I think and it's that a, is also an indicator that this this can't be just like, oh, they're just pretty. Like, why would people from all all civilizations, uh, all all cultures, all nationalities, yeah. all continents, mm-hmm. all countries, all be so into mining these things from the planet, mm-hmm. refining them, harvesting them, mm-hmm. polishing them, shaping them, and then bringing them to market for a consumer that's that rabid that it requires a huge... Uh, comfort, you know, um, mm-hmm. a show like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, you know, there's, well, there's something to that. And what's cool about the show it's is it's just not metaphysical people. You've got scientists there. You've got mineral collectors. They're not uh, looking at. They're looking at. That. You know, you have people that are looking for artwork at home decor. Right. You've got a whole bunch of different. It's not just one type of person. You've got a very large, diverse spectrum of people and what they're looking for. And the person that probably has the biggest collection looks like the biggest bum on earth. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like they just are, I don't know. They're they're, they're on the down low, I guess. Yeah. You you never know. know. Yeah. They're the guy's got billions billions of dollars of crystals. And you'd go, he could literally be a homeless man on the streets. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. And we've have, you know, now we've really put together and nourished these relationships with our miners. So yeah. we know them personally. So it's not like we're just buying our crystals from Yeah. So old- we get to yeah. go and buy directly from Madagascar. Yeah. And we get so we're going to the different miners. So when we energy muse in our in our crystals, it goes from the miner to us. Wow. So but that's taken many years. But I mean, yeah. we're asking the questions like how are these being mined? The same questions that are being asked in different industries are starting to now be asked in this this industry. Mm-hmm. And it has some ways to go. I mean, are there any issues uh, in terms of environmental threat and loss of habitat or pollution in the in the ways in which these are are mined and processed? I mean, I'm sure there are people that don't follow every restriction that they should, but we don't really work with them. So 
So mm-hmm. there's not, I mean, there are there environmental groups that are pissed off at the yeah. amethyst, you know, industry or whatever? Absolutely. Sure. It's we- about keeping, I mean, fluorite for a point last year was being saturated from the earth and it wasn't available. It was hard to get. And we decided that we're not, we used to, for a period of time, we're like, we're not selling it anymore because we don't, you, there, it has to all be in balance. It's just now everyone's take. we can't keep taking, 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 taking. It has to be in balance. So right. that's important too. You know? But it's interesting, like different crystals will show up in different regions. Like all of a sudden, like you said, they'll find a score or a mine. Like when aquamarine showed up, was it in Pakistan? Mm-hmm. Aquamarine is a stone of tranquility. Well, there was a lot of disharmony happening there. Interesting that aquamarine showed up, right? So energies show up for certain reasons. That's trippy. Can you just imagine what's what's underground that's not yet discovered uh, all over the oh, planet. Well, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. starting to so discover much uncharted it. Yeah. In these territory. mines. Yeah. Looking sure. in these mines and going in and even, you know, I was talking to the guy, the one in Tourmaline Springs. I love him. What's his name? Oh, um, Seth. Just, he's an interesting, because he, you know, with the earth and, and with the water and all that, but just going deep into these wells that have these mineral components that we get to drink now. And yeah. I think it all matters, you know? And, that's really interesting that you brought that up because when I was researching some of the different crystals to ask you guys about, tourmaline was Mm. one of them. And I thought, oh, Seth, tourmaline springs. Mm -hmm. And then it brought me back. He's like, yeah, why our water is so Mm -hmm. badass is it's going Mm -hmm. through thousands of feet of of these particular crystals and minerals to get to our bottles. Yeah, And it's like, oh shit, how it relates to the water. Mm -hmm. And so then it gets into all the different things that are possible with filtration and all of that of mimicking that process and and, uh, process from nature, but with man-made products and things like that. But if you are thinking about all this stuff, we're we're having to ground. If you want to like hardwire your house, you got to ground it in with a certain wire, these grounding mats. This is another, this is grounding. Earth plug in, earth plug in. Right. So I feel like that's what, how we maybe need to see it as a grounding mechanism. I love that. Wow. You guys make a lot of sense. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's great. Jeez, thanks. <laughs> maybe we've demystified some of it for you. Totally. Okay, good. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, which one's right for me? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh I, know what I, wanted, I know what I wanted to ask you. Okay. And then we'll wrap okay. it up because okay. I got to get up okay. to Venice to this event. I could sit here all day, really. <laughs> There's plenty more. Um, but how do they relate to the different chakras. Mm. I've heard you talk mm. about that. I was in an event you did, a dinner, I think, and uh. you were talking about the relation of the stones to actually different locations on the body. Well, to me, do you want to... Well, I mean, yeah. kind of what you did, you picked some of the, the pieces or crystals and Heather placed them on specific chakras while you were laying down on the mat. So oh. it's like the colors of the rainbow. Um, you know, you start at your base with your red stones or even your um, grounding stones like the smoky quartz that you picked. Moving up to your orange, your your solar plex, your um, sacral uh, second chakra, and then your solar plexus would be your yellows and your citrines. So you can definitely balance out the body with the colors or spectrum of the crystals. So, so for example, I do stone readings. So I want that's why I pulled your stuff because I'm like, okay, what's going on with Luke? And it was cool to see what you picked because you picked pyrite, which is like, you know what? You're ready to make some major things happen. Your, your will is there. That I love that you picked that because you're like, you have the will and then you picked amethyst and you picked some other really cool citrines. And it's almost like you're there. You just have to figure out what you want your foundation to be. For me, that's what I kind of was feeling with you is, is that you're ready to roll. Your, your intuition is there. You know, your, your will is there. And it's about connecting your foundation and your heart now. You get those two things, bam. That's interesting though that you're talking about the correlation between the chakras and the colors mm-hmm. of the stones too. Because if you anyone that's ever seen a chakra chart mm-hmm. or a map, they always have these relevant colors that go back thousands of yeah, years. It's huh? a rainbow. Yeah. Because yeah, we are the rainbow. We really are that. If you Over in Hawaii, that's we are the rainbow. And if, when you have your colors of the rainbow matched, you're in the light. You're completely connected. You're completely aligned. You know your truth and you don't get off kilter. Rad. 
Wow, I feel balanced. What a great, <laughs> what a great way to set up my 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 talk tonight oh up in God. Venice. Well, before You're we ready go, to roll, my friend, I am. So before we go, what are, what are you two really excited about right now? What have you got going on? I mean, you've got the book out. What's what's on the horizon? Where do you see this thing going as a business or just with yourselves? Well, you know, we are starting a subscription program. We're really into that whole deal. We've been working on that for a while. Um, we're into where you'll um, get crystals sent to you every month. Well, more so about courses where you'll you'll have you'll be part of a subscription program. Oh, where, cool! Where information, information. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Um, and so, um, doing more courses online. We're doing definitely another some more stuff with Hay House and doing courses on how to cut the cords and how to work with crystals. A lot of people are very interested. They they like it. They're like you, but they're like, how do I use them on a daily basis? You right. know, whatever. And, um, you know, obviously another book. another book and just traveling. We were able to, been able to really travel to some fun places now. I bet. Have you been able to go travel to any of the mines and things like that? That is next on our list for sure. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. That next Brazil year. And yeah, for for sure. Sure. I bet that would be a really interesting experience, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, to see the earth cut into and yeah absolutely and, oh, yeah. and get to see that extraction process absolutely so that is for probably sure really fascinating list. okay cool well before we head out i want to ask each of you the same question you've taught me a lot today about crystals and everything else that we've discussed and all of our listeners have benefited from that who have been three teachers or teachings that have influenced your life or your work could mm-hmm. be in any category well I think for um, Aura Miller really opened my eyes to a lot of things. I mean, um, definitely there is a person out there, actually. I love how um, I just, he opened my eyes to what's happening with the whole EMF thing. I definitely think Luke, story, you are somebody too, because I feel like um, I, what I like about you is that you're curious and I think you keep educating people. So that's that's pretty rad. Wow, that's the first time a guest has ever <laughs> named well, me. I'll, but I, but I'll I, take it. But I think that it's it's important. You know uh, what I mean? I think cool. it's that leading edge. And um, it's important that we have people that are trailblazers like yourself. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Awesome. And I just, um, let me see. Who else do you have? Let me think of one more while you're talking. Well, I would say for me, it would be Heather because Heather actually taught me... Oh, Aww. Um, about crystals. I mean, that's why I'm here at this moment. And I, you know, you, you think sometimes souls come down on this earth. They made this contract up in heaven and you're like, hey, you're going to teach me this. I'm going to teach you that. And we're going to come down the chute and we're going to learn these things together. Definitely um, crystals. I wouldn't be here without Heather. And I, I'm really grateful for that. Um, and speaking of that soul energy, like I love Carolyn Mace and her her energy, I agree. Luke is amazing. Um, I mean, you you definitely, you're on the forefront of something and it, it's inspiring because we've been on the forefront, but people weren't listening to us. We couldn't get arrested. You're really lucky. Like people are listening to you. You're in the perfect place at the perfect yeah. time and you inspire us. So yeah. thank you. Well, and one of the things thank with you. Luke, just one more thing about Luke, is, is that, you know, when you, when you hear your voice, it's like, you've got a good voice, but I'm like, is this guy like going to, is he just give good voice? You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and so it was a pleasure to, to be around you because you, you seem to be, um, you've got it. The whole, the whole deal. So I, I wish the best for you because I think so yeah. many good things are coming your way. Oh, thank I mean, you. So thank I you. I appreciate that. Very, very much. We're excited. And we will yeah. be rubbing elbows with you because that's good luck because you got a lot <laughs> Absolutely. going. Absolutely. <laughs> Who's your third though? Oh God. Okay. There's just so Thought many people. I wasn't people. paying attention. You're going to get uh, out. No, there's so many people. Um, God, there's so many people. <laughs> Jeez. Um, you can't you, you can't flatter your way out of the third. Well, the thing <laughs> is, is that these ones, I don't know if they have like books or some, but then, you know what I mean? What about Nahi? That's... You're oh freaking my gosh. me out. That's exactly no, who I, I was I mean, just Nahi was coming in big. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly who. Who's uh, Nahi? Nahi is a kahuna, a uh, Hawaiian kahuna that literally you changed me my cry. life. Like I can't. Yeah. But um, she taught me a lot. Um, she taught us a lot about Ho'oponopono, mm-hmm. the art of forgiveness and how to go through that technique. And I think that that was really life-changing. So, Well, and while we were writing our book, Meeting Z- Ziki, was that her name? Yeah. She was on the island of Molokai, which is not easy to get to. I'm just telling you. She was pretty life-changing too. Yeah. For us. Yeah. 
So there's a lot. There's so Lots many people, people. we could be here all day, but I That's think that, great. that would be it. No, right I, I'm going to let you off with the okay. three, and you and you can share her third with these <laughs> these two Hawaiian mystics. So now we yeah. actually have a bonus. You guys gave four each, oh so God. we're go. we're good. I'm very strict about that okay. that uh, closing oh, qualification. Okay. Oh, thank goodness. So. Uh, no, not really. I mean, a lot of people, it's like, my grandmother, she was so oh, inspiring. Well, and some well, people, yeah. it's like, Jesus Christ, oh, okay. my Lord and Savior. Right. You know, it just depends. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So in closing, where can we find you on websites and social media and things like that? Where do you want people to go? Well, we're at energymuse.com and we've got Instagram and Facebook following and also really great communities right now that are popping up to, on Facebook. So actually, we're taking a group through. Sarah's helping to, Sarah, who works with us, she's like another muse. Um, to take people through the book and have them go through the oh, rituals. Oh, awesome. So, in a Facebook group? Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. So that's happening. I really like the Facebook groups too. It's fun. I have one for the show and with my school, we have a couple and I'm really, I'm a big fan of that because you can, without having to be physically with mm-hmm. someone, you can actually go through an experience like that. It's very cool. It's, yep. a, yeah. it's a neat technology. And I'm always shocked at the degree of um, engagement that you get. Yeah. I'm always like, ah, I'll do this thing. No one's going to do it. And then everyone's like, hey, we're here. We're doing stuff. Yeah. We're all yeah. meeting one yeah. another. People it's, want the community. Yeah, you know, it's neat. The connection. It's a big deal. And, um, and I just want to say also, uh, thank you both. And let thank everyone you. know that you should definitely go on their Instagram. You guys have a great Instagram. Your Instagram oh. game is on point. It's beautiful. Thanks. And thank if you, you want to see visually some of the things that we've been talking about in the show, I think that'd be a good first stop. Well, Thanks. thank you very much right, just well, for the opportunity yeah. yeah right on thanks for coming on ladies mm-hmm. until we meet again I am off to Venice California oh my All god right. lucky that's fine <laughs> yeah. enjoy Bye. Venice as we bring this episode to a close I'm imagining you sitting there listening with a quartz crystal on your forehead and amethyst on your chest laying there soaking in the vibrations of those sacred rocks As I sit here and record the outro, I'm looking across the room and I actually have a couple crystals, quite a few in my podcast studio. And I didn't even think about that when I went to do the interview with them at their headquarters. I I think I actually use crystals a lot more than I thought. And so now I'm inspired to do it even more. Now, I don't know if I can take it to the level that our guests do because they're like, I mean, they're serious, they're hardcore. But uh, I would someday like to get two giant amethysts and put one on either side of my headboard. I've always had that idea and uh, I'm going to manifest that somehow. I got to go to one of these rock shows or something. Not a rock concert. Don't get it twisted. But I think they call them a rock show. That's where you go look at all the crystals. Or maybe they're a crystal show. Stone show, gem show, gem show, (laughs) gem show. I'm going to the gem show. I don't know where I'm going. I'm going freaking crazy is where I'm going. But listen, here's what's up. If you want to find a bunch of really rad information about everything that I'm up to, go to lukestory.com. If you want to go to any of the upcoming events, that's lukestory.com forward slash events. If you want to get detailed show notes from each episode emailed to you every week, go to lukestory.com forward slash newsletter. If you want to get the cherry picked best biohacking technologies, the best supplements, the best stuff in the world that I've pre-vetted and tried out, Go to lukestory.com forward slash store. Speaking of lukestory.com forward slash store, you can find most of my show sponsors there along with some sweet discounts. Wow, Cookie's excited about them discounts. Woo! She's loving it. So (laughs) here's what you can find. Go to my store, lukestory.com forward slash store, and you're going to find all my sponsors and discounts. But you can also just go directly to the sponsors. And I'm going to give you their URLs right now. Check out Altera Pure Organic Bedding. Stuff is awesome. I sleep on it every single night. I'm actually hopping on a plane tomorrow and I'm going to bring my Semina pillow, the best pillow I've ever had in my damn life. You can find that on my site. Uh, It ain't cheap, but I tell you what, it's the only pillow I've ever used that doesn't make my neck hurt. What is um, enclosing that beautiful beautiful and expensive Semina pillow is my Altera Pure 100% organic, super soft, super safe pillowcase. So go to alterapure.com. That's A-L-T-E-R-R-A-P-U-R-E, Altera Pure with two R's. If you get over there and enter the code LIFESTYLIST, you will save 15% off your own organic bedding. It's beautifully made, it's gorgeous, it's soft, and it is beyond organic. It's insane. 
Speaking of organic, woo, what a segue. Organifi. Let's go to Organifi.com forward slash Luke. Now I use their green products. I use the Organifi gold, the red, they have probiotics. They have a bunch of stuff. But I would say uh, my nighttime routine is using the gold. Daytime routine is usually using the green. You can go to Organifi with an I uh, dot com forward slash Luke. I'm losing it here. It's getting late, you guys. It's like almost, yeah, it's 11 p.m. Why am I doing this right now? I'm stumbling all over my goddamn words. <laughs> Organifi.com forward slash Luke. Use the code lifestylist and save 20%. And then you got to go check out uh, Tonic Wellness Boutique in Los Angeles. It's right down the street from my house. I'm in there all the time. They've got amazing infrared saunas, cryo. They've got a bunch of great stuff for beauty, for your skin. It is the hot spot for many a local model and actress. But don't be scared if you're a dude. I've been in there many times and... uh have a lot of really good services there as well. So that's Tonic Wellness Boutique. You can find them at tonicboutique.com. They're right up the street on Beverly. Beautiful location, friendly people, great place to go in and do some self-care. So there you go, folks. I'm going to be uh, back in your eardrums next Tuesday with Max Lugavere, where we talk about how to fix your brain and keep it fixed. Thanks for listening to the Lifestylist podcast. It brings me great joy to wrap up this amazing episode with Energy Muse. This episode of the Lifestylist Podcast was produced by podcastmasters.net. 